Hey everyone, it's Fallout Med. In this episode, we'll be showing you how to get the Ballistic Weave Armor mod through the Railroad Faction, utilizing optimal routes that include power armor locations as well as crafting materials. Ballistic Weave allows you to put damage and energy resistance on undergarments and headpieces. You can obtain it exclusively through the Railroad Faction after completing a series of quest chains. Since there's no fast traveling on survival, the best way to get around is with vertibirds through the Brotherhood of Steel after the Pritwin's arrival. An alternative is also having high endurance, it allows you to run for longer, and pairing them with legendary destroyer leg pieces will give you 10% speed movement, totaling 20% if you have the two leg pieces. This is a list of vanilla undergarments that allow you to equip armor pieces on top and the headgear that won't interfere with undergarments or armor pieces. The damage and energy resistant levels are dependent on two things, your character level and your armor perk rank. The Institute Killer Weave you see on the list allows the player to add 10% bonus damage against Institute members and synths on some undergarments like the Ballistic Weave mod. Another thing to note before you go down the long quest chain is when you get to Mercer's safe house, the settlement the railroad asks you to secure is dependent on your character level and RNG. The higher your character level is, the further you'll be likely to be sent to clear difficult settlement locations. I highly recommend you start the quest chain before level 30, as well as preparing the materials needed to craft Ballistic Weave. And don't forget to max out your armor perk rank as you level up. At level 14, I have Caps Collector perk and three Jerktown Jerk Evander magazines, as well as Grape Mentats Camps, giving me a total of 29% discount plus my wearable Charisma gear. I went to Bunker Hill to buy Ballistic Fiber from Lucas. He's not stationed here, so you may have to wait around. Cleo in Good Neighbor and Tegan in the Pridwen also carry Ballistic Fiber shipments. Deb in Bunker Hill has Fiberglass shipments. You might already have enough of Fiberglass and Ballistic Fiber if you've collected things like military hardware and tape, telephones, rat poison, Abraxo cleaners, or cigar boxes. Now that we have all the materials needed to craft Ballistic Weave, we're gonna go find the railroad by following this path through the canals, leading us to a power armor locked behind a novice lock. In case you didn't know, you don't need to get the Road to Freedom quest to unlock access to the railroad faction. Behind this boat wreckage, you're gonna find a power armor. I suggest leaving the armor near the railroad HQ. We'll be doing a lot of traveling around downtown anyway. The extra resistance can come in handy. Stick to the left here, Pikmin's gallery is on the other side, and there's a lot of raiders in the area. They aren't too difficult to kill, but they can throw molotovs, and if you don't have the best gear at this time, they can easily kill you. Make a ride on this pathway, and you'll see three ghouls. If you don't have spray and pray from Cricket, I recommend you get it. It shreds just about anything. There is a steamer trunk behind this door, if you have a companion, they can unlock it from the inside. Otherwise, you gain access through the roof from the railroad church tower and hopping all the way here. I'm gonna drop off my power armor here. There's a few low-level ghouls on the main floor. They aren't terribly difficult, even with pipe weapons. If you want access to the church roof, clear the ghouls on the back as well. Elites to a cap stash and some bobby pins. The catacomb tunnel leads to the railroad headquarters and it's filled with more ghouls. The freedom trail code on the spinning wheel is the word railroad. That's Demona, the leader of the railroad, will confront you with a number of questions. So if you have charisma gear and some chems, get them ready so that you can pass some speech checks. 7 charisma for yellow and 11 for red is the minimum. You can otherwise use regular dialogue options and still join the faction. When you complete the Road to Freedom quest, you'll automatically start Tradescraft with Deacon. The railroad needs our help to retrieve Carrington's prototype from their former HQ, the Switchboard. 
after it was overtaken by the Institute. Head back to your main base through the canals, empty all your junk, save your progress, and bring enough 8 ammo and camp supplies for the long run back to Lexington. Before we get to Deacon, nearby there is a family of rat stags. Kill them and collect their meat to cook it later for that 25 plus carry weight bonus. Deacon will be waiting under an overpass, dressed as a wastelander. If he doesn't start the quest dialogue, wait 24 hours. It's Wastelander Camo. This is one of those annoying escort quests the game gives you, where you have to follow a slow moving NPC. Stay there with it, thankfully it's not awfully long. Clear the ghouls and make your way to Rick. There is a bed here and it's worth saving before heading to the switchboard. Don't rush the dialogue and use the code phrase. Mine is in the shop. As soon as it's safe, Speak I'm to Deacon and decide to do a frontal assault hmm. or take the tunnel. Well, the easiest choice being easier, the tunnel. No cakewalk. If you pass Rick's speech checks, you can order him on a you suicide mission else. on a frontal assault, let him snipe from the overpass, or get him to give you a couple of first day supplies. We'll pass through some train tracks with a power armor behind an advanced terminal. Make use of the power armor if you have the hacking perk. We'll make our way to the sewer pipe using the quest marker to find it. Wait for Deacon to hack the terminal or if you have master hack perk, you can do it yourself. Venturing through the utility tunnel, you'll encounter a number of scents. The best strat is to sneak here and have Deacon pick up some aggro. This terminal activates some turrets, giving you some help killing these scents. Following these sewer pipes, you'll find this Novas terminal, and this will give you access to the former Railroad HQ. There are a number of sins here, so play it safe. Take your cams, use power armor if you picked one. You'll find a lot of valuable loot in this room too. A fusion core in the reactor room, along with ammo by the beds and a cooking station. Once you save, go up the stairs and collect the covered operations manual, giving you extra sneak. Opening the door leads to a hole with a laser trap wire. Dismantle them and flank the two synths on the left side. There is a synth patrolling the right side towards the washroom, so be ready for that too. Following the hole, you'll encounter a trap, but the synth patrolling actually walked in on it, so I got very lucky. We'll take a quick detour down the path, making a right. You'll see a room with a Novas terminal. In these rooms, you will get some camps and valuable loot, as well as a cap stash and a Nuka Cola. Following the quest marker into this room, you'll find some high level scents guarding the vault door. After you kill them, get the steamer trunk and collect the hazmat suits. Utilize the armor and weapons workbench to break down gear and collect material while Deacon opens the bolt. Tommy's corpse will have around 50 caps. Once you find Carrington's prototype, loot the two stealth boys and the mini nuke. Deacon will give you Tommy's legendary weapon, the Deliverer improving bat hit chance and 25% less action point cost. Going towards the utility elevator, you will find two synths guarding it. Behind an advanced locked door, you will find another fusion core. Activating the elevator will send us to Scullum's Joe's basement. There are some tin cans and minor loot here. Our exit will be through Joe's Scullum's restaurant. You'll encounter a number of synths and a couple of turrets. There's also a lot of valuable loot here. It's worth checking the kitchen and the cash registers for pre-war money. Deacon will go back to the railroad HQ after speaking to him. Be careful walking out of here, as there are a lot of mines on the road. Make your way back to your main base and save. You to Empty your inventory, get your essentials ready, and make your way back to the railroad HQ. On the way there, I like to check the amphitheater, as the valuable loot can sometimes respawn. 
We got caps, gold watches, mini nukes, and pre-war food. Same thing for the canals and the abandoned boats. Sometimes the loot will respawn on these two. Deacon will be a good friend here and convince Desdemona to let you join the railroad. Once you join, find Dr. Carrington and give him the prototype. Make sure to loot their headquarters. There's a lot of valuable items here, and you can always sell the junk back to Tommy Tinker anyway. When you speak to Tom, he'll go on about a crazy theory on how there is microscopic sense in our food and tries to convince you to take his shot to get rid of them. If you really want to, there's battery acid in that serum. You can't nuke an omelet without Here, I'm just showing you guys. Yeah. Don't do it. It nukes your health down to like 1 or 5%. But my stats are okay. Use the back tunnel. You're gonna find a Nuka Cherry, some first aid supplies, and a fusion core locked in an expert terminal. If you got a power armor around the area, now is the time to get it. The back entrance is behind this boat. Okay, cut the shit. Who is that? Remember the blue sign on this building for reference. We'll be picking up a dead drop near Bunker Hill. This starts the quest after dark. The dead drop will always be in this mailbox, but the ones after that will always be random. <clears throat> we'll have to talk to Stockton in Bunker Hill. Give him the railroad countersign and he'll give you the details of the mission where we'll need to escort a synth to a safe house at night time. To get there safely with as little encounters is by making a right here, passing this road blockade, go straight towards the truck and make a right. You'll see a couple of mongrels here so beware. The reason we want to take this pathway is because on the left side there's a bunch of super mutants and on the right side there are a bunch of raiders. Go up the stairs and this will lead us to a fusion reactor with a fusion core. Be careful not aggroing the raiders on the other side. There's also a ghoul that spawns just behind the reactor. Jump back down into the shop. You're gonna make a left and run past the raiders and towards the church. Get your camps ready and kill the raiders inside. The fighting you hear in the distance is from the Mechanist DLC. I recommend not going anywhere near there. That will turn the majority of random encounters to be robots and Mechanist raiders. Once the church is secured, all men stocked in and the synth will arrive. I'll fire up the signal. Uh -huh. A railroad agent right? nicknamed High Rise will guide us through the, the safe house. We'll be crossing a super mutant on the roof, on the unmarked location, followed by raiders near the Monsignor Plaza. If you haven't cleared this area, be very well prepared. There's also a construction site nearby with super mutants. Stick to the right side of the road as to not aggroing them. As you make your way down the road, there is an unmarked location on that building with the blue door you see on the left side. It leads to a Mr. Handy vendor that sells junk and shipments. After crossing the bridge, talk to High Rise again to complete the escort mission. I would recommend you guys go into the building because there's a lot of valuable items like this fat man. And going up the stairs, you'll also find some workbenches as well as more valuable loot like this mini nook nice. and a guns and bullets magazine. Instead of taking the elevator, go through this floor opening. You'll eventually find some Nuka Quantums and more valuable loot that leads to a steamer trunk. Before speaking to Dr. Carrington and completing the After Dark Carrington. quest, make sure you save. Mercer's safe house location will be determined once you receive Butcher's Bill quest. It's the only way to have some way of controlling the RNG on Vanilla Survival. You can reload the save until you get the ideal location. I got a very unlucky dead drop location. It's all the way in the downtown core. As I said earlier, these dead drops are completely random. I'll have to take the canal route to get around it. 
On the way there, you'll see a boat with random settlers along with a couple of floor mattresses. There is a better saving spot though. If we keep swimming down, Sweet. we'll see a shack in the distance, open the novice lock and sleep away. Not much you can do if you get a dead drop at some obscure faraway mailbox, unless you have a fast travel mod. Anyways, it is what it is. Behind Consumer Robotics, you're gonna find an unmarked vendor named Slim. He's got some basic gear and some ammo. Making our way northeast on this pathway, making a turn behind the Mass Medical Center, we're gonna find our mailbox. The dead drop is gonna send us to Kendall Hospital up in Cambridge. We're gonna backtrace our steps back to the shack where we saved. There is a random item location here. For me, it's a master save. And right in this bathtub, there is a little baby dolphin for some reason. Heading back to our base, we're gonna save. I'm we're gonna empty our inventory and head to Cambridge, where I made my way up the police station and made a ride towards the church. We're gonna find some ghouls and eventually Kendall Hospital. Kendall Hospital has a number of raiders on this main floor area. There are a few others hiding in the rooms. Keep in mind there is a turret up on the left side. As long as you sneak and you play cautiously, you're gonna be okay. There's also an armor and weapons workbench here, so if you wanna gather all their weapons and armor, Taking the elevator, we're gonna go down the basement. And this is the guy over here with the rocket launcher. So beware. As long as you stay in the door frame and you don't advance further, he is not gonna get you with the rocket launcher. So just stay in this area majority of the raiders are gonna come for you this one that almost killed me that's the one that had the rocket launcher he's um higher raider level so if he's done with his uh rocket launcher ammo he's gonna come after you go down this way you're gonna keep following this path jump down and go into this room in this desk you're gonna find the augusta report and that's it for here you can keep going down and work towards the uh, rest of the levels and you're gonna find a dead claw eventually but we're just getting the quest so i went back to hangman's alley i saved before going back to the railroad we want to make sure we have the materials Damn. to build two turrets we're gonna get Mercer's safe house quest from Pam and we need to not only secure the settlement but build defenses so make sure before you run all the way to the whatever safe house you've been assigned that you have the materials for me it was outpost Simonja up north nearby there is a random encounter location and I got Gene, the dog seller, so I bought myself a dog for 250 caps. Though it require a speech check. On these train tracks, you're gonna find the blue cart. Go in it and there is an advanced terminal that's gonna open up a power armor. It already has a fusion core in it. We can definitely use this for securing the settlement under the overpass you're gonna find an unmarked shack location with a bed and if you keep going up north you're gonna find a settler with some caps day tripper and some chems now the best way to clear outpost Sebonja is to go on the overpass because there is a power armor raider with a fat man 
you want to play it safe throw some grenades from the overpass and snipe and do a little dance back and forth don't let the raider get you with the mini nuke and keep repeating until you get them all down keep throwing those grenades if you have once the raider is done with mini nukes he's gonna come and do a melee attack so he's fairly easy after he runs out of ammo there is one final turret that we're gonna kill with no problem and now we can claim our settlement and if you brought your materials then you should have enough to build the two turrets after we secure the safe house we're gonna go back to the railroad and speak to Pam she's gonna give us the jackpot quests you can either get one or two depending on your luck the choices are between hop 360 pinnacle high rise and last one is med memorial hospital up north I gotta head to Hop 360, it's an unmarked location and we're gonna follow the same canal route that we've always followed, except we're gonna drop by this outdoor patio right there on that building and we're gonna head to the pedestrian overpass. We're gonna stay on the red, we're gonna run across as to not aggro the raiders and immediately make a left into this alleyway and make a right. You're gonna see some super mutants, don't pay mind to them and keep running across this barricaded road. Keep heading towards this rubble and you're gonna make a right into the alleyway and up the staircase. Once you get up here, you're going to see a dilapidated structure and just cross it. And on your left, you're going to find this door. One of these guys actually followed me but got glitched in the wall, so I got lucky. There's nothing else in this room other than the cache location. So there's some good stuff in these cache quests, like a stealth boy and some first aid kits head back to Pam either you're gonna complete it and you can go ahead and talk to Tom or she's gonna give you another one I unfortunately had to get another cash mission so I had to go back and speak to Pam and she sent me up north this time to the Memorial Hospital and this location is nearby Taffington Boathouse. So if you're there and you don't mind killing some bugs, you can claim this settlement. When you make your way to the hospital, try to stay on the road. Just because, uh, as you can see here, I got very close to the water area and I aggroed a bunch of these blood bugs. Thankfully, I have the overseer guardian and the spray and prey which are extremely OP weapons so it's not a big deal for me and in case you didn't know you can detonate their mini nuke if you shoot at it funny enough the truck behind it exploded just as this other guy was coming at me and that's it goodbye puppy when you go in the hospital on your left side you're gonna see a super mutant suicider kill him right away and just stay by the entrance you can easily snipe the rest of the super mutants in this main room make your way up the floor be mindful of this guy on the top left and make your way up to the third floor on this little pathway into the room we're gonna make our way into a security door with a ton of valuable loot and ammo that is if you have the expert hacking perk sneak around and right here on this door you're gonna find the cache and you can tell that this is the last one just because of the amount of valuable items you can find here and backtrack to the main room 
this door if you have advanced lock picking really you can access it or reach out the window and get this surgical journal giving you extra limp damage lastly i'm gonna show you the last jackpot location near fallen sky bridge we're gonna follow the same canal route that we've taken before we're gonna keep going up until the cafeteria building making our way to the pedestrian underpass crossing it and going straight and instead of making a left into an alleyway we're gonna make a right into this rubble in front of us is postal square and there are some raiders here so stick to the left keep running and make another left here for some reason there are mutants super mutants here there shouldn't be any or usually there shouldn't be any keep making your way up the stairs so this is one of the two pathways you can take to get to the high-rise building and this is one of the hardest ones just because there are high level super mutants surrounding the building so make sure you have your chemist or your power armor to get these guys down if you're having a lot of trouble here you can skip the chapters and i'm gonna show you the other route but if not then you're gonna stick to it get these super mutants down and grab the elevator there are still a few wandering off the overpass so be careful with those as well once you cut them all down go into the pile of cars into this makeshift bridge and go into the high rise building here you can just grab the elevator but up on this room there is a super mutant and it happened to be legendary too down here you're gonna see a fight between super mutants and gunners you can flank them from the back while they're occupied with each other use the opportunity to kill them fast once they're down cross the little hallway down the elevator and this is the room where the cache site is located these gunners are very high leveled hence why i said that this is one of the hardest locations they can send you to but once they're down this door should open this is where the cache site is located the easier alternative is from good neighbor you can make a left run past the super mutants if you haven't killed them yet making another left up on this overpass be careful here if you haven't cleared this area there can sometimes be raiders wandering around i actually got a legendary myself going up this ramp with the monkey you can find a bed and some whiskey as well if you want to save quick before going up the high-rise building making a right and going straight you're gonna see some staircases this is gonna lead you to the high-rise building this is also an easier route just because you're not dealing with super mutants and you're going straight into the cash building once you're completed and you've collected the cash talk to, to Pam and model. you're gonna talk to Tom because if you don't talk to him you're not gonna the have access has to ballistic tech. weave it's only after you complete the jackpot quests and you talk to Tom that you have the ability to craft the ballistic weave as you can see I got to level 25 and I crafted level 3 ballistic weave that gives me 90 damage and resistance on undergarments and my headpiece so I'm almost at 300 resistance all in all you guys decide if it's worth your time let me know in the comments and I hope you found this guide helpful thanks for watching